Hi, I'm Kirby with Augustine E-Bikes, and your e-bike battery can oftentimes be the most expensive part of your e-bike, and often the most misunderstood. In this video, I will look into many aspects of e-bike batteries, from maintenance to troubleshooting, as well as some tips on buying batteries directly from manufacturers. If you like this video, we hope you'll subscribe below. Today, let's take a look inside your e-bike's battery. What you will see is a series of 18650 lithium battery cells spot welded together in packs that are connected in parallel to increase the capacity. A lithium ion battery is a type of rechargeable battery in which lithium ions move from the negative electrode to the positive electrode during discharge and back when charging. Lithium batteries use a lithium compound as one of the electrode materials which allows for ionic movement. Inside your battery you'll find a battery management system or BMS. The BMS is an electronic system that manages your rechargeable battery by protecting the battery from operating outside its safe operating area, monitoring its state, calculating secondary data, reporting that data, controlling its environment, authenticating it, and balancing it. In order to maximize the battery's capacity and to prevent localized undercharging or overcharging, the BMS actively ensures that all the cells that compose the battery are kept at the same voltage or state of charge through balancing. The BMS is controlling items such as voltage, total voltage, or voltage of individual cells, temperature, average temperature, or temperatures of individual cells, state of charge or depth of discharge to indicate the charge level of the battery, is state of health, a variously defined measurement of the overall condition of the battery, the current or current in or current out of the battery. Your battery is a well-designed power management system. It will last you a long time if you take care of it, don't store it in extreme temperatures, and make sure to keep it charged regularly. Here are some e-bike tips for maintaining your e-bike's battery for a healthy battery. You can get up to double the life of your battery's expected life by taking care when charging. Lithium batteries should stay cool. If you want to make sure your battery lasts longer, don't let it get hot in discharge or when charging. Just use the finger test and just put your finger on it to determine if it's hot. Batteries do not like extreme temperatures. E-bike batteries, when possible, should be charged slowly. The smaller the pack in amp hours, the slower it should be charged. Use a low amp 2 to 3 amp charger, or if you can, a smart charger that can charge your battery at 80, 90, or 100 percent. It's always good to charge slow, unless you're in a hurry. Lithium batteries only need to be charged when needed. Batteries live longer when not charged to 100% every time. Having said that, you should charge your battery to 100% at least once in a while to ensure the balance charged. Balance charging is a function that is controlled by more advanced battery management systems or BMS. When the battery has reached its peak charge, the cells will slowly be balanced so each parallel string of cells are at the same exact voltage. This not only extends the range of your pack, it also extends the life expectancy. Brand 18650 cells are very good at staying in balance. Always use a charger that is designed for your pack. If you use the wrong charger, you not only risk the long life of your pack, it can also become a fire hazard. Make sure the charger's maximum voltage matches the maximum voltage of your pack. See specs on the back of your charger. Try and have a multimeter available to gauge the health of your battery. It will give you an accurate voltage reading of your pack and also give you a good idea of the capacity of your pack in amp hours as your battery ages. It's normal for a lithium battery to drop in both amp hours and max voltage as it ages. Here are just a few tips for troubleshooting your e-bike's battery. 
Recently, a customer of ours ran into a problem with a battery that he bought from someone else that prompted me to want to make this video about troubleshooting your battery. Before troubleshooting your battery, make sure to fully charge the battery. The best way to check if your battery is charged is the onboard LCD on the battery itself. Some of the controller's LCD readouts of the battery aren't always the most accurate, so use the battery. The customer bought a 1200 watt conversion kit from us and bought a 52 volt battery from someone else. Everything worked great for two weeks and then nothing worked. He called me up to see if the problem might be the conversion kit. The people he bought the battery from had asked him to take the battery apart and test the battery management system. I let him know that minute that if you open up your battery your warranty is null and void and basically you're on your own. The battery management system or BMS is a small computer inside the battery that manages the discharge and charge of individual cells. The BMS also talks with the controller managing the power distribution to the motor. The customer told me that when he tested the battery off the bike it showed a full charge but when he connected it to the bike every time he turned on the LCD controller the bike would shut down. I thought it was strange that turning on the battery would shut down the controller. So I asked him to connect the battery to the bike and then plug the charger into the battery connecting it to his local house current. When he connected the bike it worked indicating that the problem was with the battery and not with the kit and that, it was, that basically the battery wasn't holding a charge. Since then he's gone off and gotten his battery fixed. It's taken him a while but he's got it done. Some basic things to consider in troubleshooting your battery. Have a voltage meter. You can buy them for under $30 at any hardware store. The voltage meter will directly test the voltage of the battery. If you're not getting the proper voltage readout for your battery, either your BMS is corrupt or your cells are dying. The older your battery, the more likely the latter is true. It's very important to make sure you're charging your battery with the correct charger. Your charger's input and output voltage and amps are clearly marked on the back of the charger. This is seriously important. Make sure it's designed for the battery that you have. You can ruin your battery if you're charging it with the wrong charger. These batteries can operate in both cold and heat, however the minute you're done riding, make sure to store and rest the battery in a dry place at room temperature. And avoid humidity. Humidity is the enemy of the battery. Once you know you're looking for an e-bike battery, here are some tips on how to buy batteries directly from the manufacturer. Sometimes it can seem daunting to sort through all the different choices out there when looking to buy a battery. And since it's an expensive investment, you want to make sure that you're making the right decision. In this video, we'll look at some of the basic tips for buying your e-bike battery that will help you make good and safe choices. One of the first things to understand is that the e-bike battery world, ultimately all roads lead to China. Some of the biggest places to find e-bike batteries are online, such as stores as Amazon or DHgate and AliExpress, which act as middlemen for many manufacturers throughout Asia. Or, of course, you can buy directly from the manufacturer, which I've done many times, but it's a little bit trickier. So let's go through the checklist of what you should look for in order to make an informed decision. First, determine the voltage you'll need for the battery, and that is determined by the voltage of your controller and motor. Is it a 24, 36, 48, 52, or 72 volt kit? The next is to determine how many amp hours you need. And amp hours are important because the larger the number, the greater your range. Next look at cell types. The biggest makers of battery cells are Sanyo, Samsung, Panasonic, and LG. And sometimes you'll pay a premium for selecting a specific brand versus a generic Chinese battery. In a, in a later video, we'll explore the debate between battery brands. Next, match the right BMS or battery management system. Lower voltage kits can run on a lower amp BMS, such as 20 amp output. But for example, a 1200 watt kit or above will require at least a 30 or 35 amp BMS. I also look at the number of MAs or milliamp hours, which is a unit that measures electric power over time. It is commonly used to measure the energy capacity of a battery. In general, the more MAs, the longer the battery capacity or battery life. Next look at chargers. The 2 amp charger, which is common, are the slower charges, while the 3, 4, and 5 amp chargers charge faster. And this really is your preference, which kind of charger you'd like to use. 
Manufacturers always indicate a number of charging cycles. I usually pay no attention to it since all of my batteries have far exceeded those numbers. I believe they list these to cover their ass. I think they're designed to manage expectations of how many cycles you get out of the battery. And then ultimately there's cost. This is where things fluctuate wildly. The tools I use to determine whether it's a good price for the product that has matched all of my criteria are tools such as customer reviews, manufacturer ratings, how long the company's been in business, are batteries their core business, warranties, etc. All of this information is readily available online. I've had great success with aggregators like DHgate and AliExpress with their built-in customer support and customer protection. I hope these tips have been helpful in buying the right e-bike battery that should last you many, many years of great rides.